back everybody it is the working brother coming back at you with another talk we've got soviet russian bear on again with us yuri how are you doing welcome back to the show hi hi everyone how are you uh, how is i am uh, great thank you yeah i'm great it's great thank you um we're gonna have a little bit more of a serious talk today Yesterday we uh, discussed all kinds of, uh, let's say, light-hearted uh, subjects, including video games. We'll leave a link somewhere. Um, but uh, today, once Yuri gets done with his messaging, mm-hmm. <laughs> we're going to uh, talk about the one year of the SMO. Um, oh, yes, sure. It's been going on for a year now. And uh, yeah. that, basic, that basically means that, uh, that uh, you know, uh, many people thought this was going to last, you know, a month or two months and, uh, and it was going to be over really quickly. But uh, as one of our other guests pointed out, Ukraine is the biggest country in uh, Europe and it also has the biggest military in Europe or had the biggest military in Europe, other than Russia, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, so tell us, tell us your take on uh, what's been going on, and uh, you know both the war on the ground and the war on the internet. <laughs> well, first of all, I have to tell you that I didn't expect the SMO to begin in the first place. Uh, before the even at the beginning of the February 2022, almost all of Russian. Um, political and geopolitical experts and analysts saying were saying that um, there will be no SMO or direct military action against Ukraine. Like, in February, on February 2022, I also didn't think that. I even made two videos saying that, though, there is not going to... The, the, the direct action, military Russian action against Ukraine is not going to happen. And um, to be honest with you, I really thought that Russia is going to uh, fight Ukraine psychologically and economically. Like we're mm-hmm. going to fi- like the Russia is going to finish the construction of uh, the Nord Stream Nord Stream Two pipeline, and it's going to launch the Nord Stream Two pipeline and uh, cut all the gas transit f- uh, f- through Ukraine, and mm-hmm. uh, like uh, declare an economic blockade on Ukraine and sanction and put uh, sanctions from hell on Ukraine and try to impose uh, the Russia's Russia's will on Ukraine like uh, economically pressure them into surrendering and economic yeah. and psychologically you know but I was boy I was wrong <laughs> and like, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, we started a direct uh, military uh, operation and it it was a shock to me although i understood everything when the when putin officially recognized the uh, the breakaway the republics of donbass mm-hmm. like luhansk and donetsk republics he recognized no. them as, and then i thought to myself oh man there is going to be a direct military action because the Lansky regime is not going to stop shelling of those the donbass and republics uh they they have been shelling it uh, on a small scale for all the eight years since 2014 uh, but uh, before the SMO started they uh, they conducted a massive like shelling on Donetsk yeah. and Lugansk republics yeah right before the start yeah that's true and, uh, when when, yeah. when it started when it started uh, it, like it basically stopped uh, one of the one of the offensive that was planned and uh, yeah. more people more people died in Donetsk before the start of the special military operation than the first two three months after it. Yes, yeah, that's absolutely cor- correct. Yes, but uh, um, and back then when the uh, the Russian military started to advance, like in the first days, oh, I remember the the Gostomil uh, landing, Gostomil paratroopers, mm-hmm. they were under siege and. Um, and we sent reinforcements. Your, what is your opinion of Gostomel? Uh, you know, like there's uh, there's an idea that uh, the Russians uh, failed. You know, the West wants to say that Gostomel and uh, the whole Kiev offensive and all of the like uh, border incursions from Belarus and so on, all of that was a failure. 
Do you think it was a failure or do you think it achieved the military objective? Well, I don't know if it's confirmed or not, but there was some sort of a cargo, a dangerous cargo inside of the Maria plane, you know, the biggest mm -hmm. plane in the world. And there yeah. was a, some sort of mysterious former. cargo from, yeah, former. <laughs> and uh, there was some <laughs> sort of mysterious cargo from Western countries that they mm -hmm. could, I don't know what was that. And then, uh, and I don't know, was it really confirmed? But still, there was something, some something bad, something sinister in Gostomel uh, that Russia should have destroyed. And after that, mm -hmm. objective was achieved. And the Chernobyl man, Chernobyl. I remember even Ukrainian and Russian military actually cooperated to secure Chernobyl to prevent any sort of nuclear leak from the mm -hmm. from the Chernobyl power plant mm -hmm. and the Chernobyl uh, alienation zone. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah, this yeah. Is, exclusion mm -hmm. in English, exclusion Exclu zone. Yeah, yeah, exclusion zone. Yeah, I'm sorry, I said alienation because I translate <laughs> directly from Russian. Yeah, like yeah. Actu I, I actually, realized. Yeah. I realized. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exclusion zone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, there's uh, there's that, and then there's, of course, uh, all the stories we heard uh, of the, you know, uh, Ukrainian military selling APCs and other kind of uh, military hardware directly to the Russians and then surrendering, you know, uh, there was all kinds of stories during this uh, conflict or during the SMO. Um, yes, but I think that the actual truth is right now is under top secret, uh, is top secret, and we 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 may learn about it like decades after the whole thing happened. But anyway, if Gostomel was so important, then the Russian troops sent uh, paratroopers to the Russian army sent paratroopers to capture it. But still, mm -hmm. the whole this whole thing about the uh, Russian military leaving Chernigov, Kiev, and all that, uh, all those cities, mm -hmm. I think it's because, um, in my personal opinion, the Russian military did not uh, did not calculate the uh, the amount of support that the West is willing to provide for Ukraine. Like mm -hmm. in the first two or three days. Uh, you know, there is a meme of uh, Russia taking Kiev in three days, although yeah. none of the Russian official, none of the Russian generals or none of the Russian military senior officials said that, oh, we're going to take Kiev in three days. It was actually an American general, Mark Miley, who said that uh, Russia can take Kiev in three days, but if it declares a war and total mobilization. Yeah, yeah. That is the nuance that uh, all people ignore, that General Mark Miley actually said that if Russia mobilizes all of its forces and declares a war on Ukraine, then it can take Kiev in three days. So but wait, it let wasn't. Me get this straight. Let me get this straight. It's an American general who has Russian propaganda, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Mark Miley. Okay. Just, just okay. checking. He, he yes. sounds American, yeah? He's American. But Russia did not fully mobilize. It was just uh, of course not. a special military operation. And you cannot mm -hmm. send two, uh, like 20,000 troops against a 6 million city. What kind yeah. of incompetent commander sends 20,000 troops against a six, five, six million city? This is insanity. Mm -hmm. And you know that urban combat is the hardest combat. It is the bloodiest and you know that yeah urban combat is hell yeah, war yeah, in yeah, general yeah. is hell and urban combat is double hell <laughs> the most difficult part basically yeah, the like most you difficult, have to clear yeah. room by room yes 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 that's what that's what's going on in bakhmut right now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and nobody was think, uh, I, now that you mentioned bakhmut what do you think about mm -hmm. the situation there why uh do people, you know, have been saying forever that Bahmut is not important, Bahmut is uh, not important, or it is important, it's the most important, and then, like, you know, this story keeps changing every two weeks, and now, you know, Bahmut is not important, and the Russians will take it, but it's okay. Why do you, why do you think that <laughs> well, is the narrative? Well, people who say that Bakhmut is not important, I think it's just their coping mechanism. You know, it's not important. Well, next time they're going to say that Kharkov is not important, Odessa is not important. I think it's just a coping mechanism. Well, mm -hmm. 
In reality, Bakhmut is actually very important. It is a very important logistical and transport hub, transportation yeah. hub. If we take it, then after that, uh, all of Donbass, all of Donetsk People's Republic will be liberated because Slavyansk and Kramatorsk, uh, without Bakhmut, they will fall. Because if we take Bakhmut, logistical hub, how mm-hmm. are going? How are the? How are you? How is Kiev regime going to supply their troops in Donbass? Yeah, yeah, that's 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 what I'm expecting as well. That's why uh, mm-hmm. they've been trying so hard to hold on to it. But uh, judging from yeah, yeah, the maps... if Bakhmut is so, mm-hmm. if Bakhmut is so unimportant, why they are? Why do they keep sending reserves? They want to hold it at all costs. If it's not important, yeah. then why don't just you? Why don't they just leave it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I don't know, mm-hmm. um, but but there's a lot of uh, people in the blogosphere or the military mm-hmm. correspondents who uh, you oh. know talk about <laughs> who talk about uh, the stuff on the ground like as if they're there, and uh, and they talk about um, grand strategies, and they often have a very I don't want to say negative, but not positive view of things. Sometimes, you know, like uh, tell us about your opinion of the of the Kherson and Kharkiv uh, great offensives of Ukraine. Were they like great offensives of Ukraine, or like some even military analysts are saying now that they basically pulled back <laughs> the Russians? Well, mm, well, surely. Uh, it was a success for them. But if you're talking about the Kharkov uh, region, like Kupyansk, Izium, uh, or uh, Liman, uh, basically they swarmed, they overwhelmed them with numbers. Uh, the, the least protected, uh, the least protected uh, seg- section of their of the occupied of the Russian liberated territories by mm-hmm. Russian, like in Kupiansk and Izium, there was only like the Russian SWAT, uh, Sober, mm-hmm. and they yeah. they kind of they kind of outnumbered them like ten or five to uh, ten or five Ukrainians for one soldier. Of course they're gonna take that. Of course they're gonna pull back uh, yeah, because yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, because simply out the Ukrainians were simply outnumbering Russians. So of course, but from but, what I but understand, the, fact- the the ground also was very hard to defend. Like it was not, uh, yeah, it was not very easily defensible ground. Basically, from what I understood, yes, and it's especially true about Kherson. Uh, like the only natural barrier was the Dnieper River. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, you remember that interview with General Suravikin Armageddon? Yeah, yeah. When he was talking about making some tough decisions and the situation is tense, mm-hmm. he was talking about uh, leaving Kherson. Yeah, yeah. Because it was very hard to defend. And if that bridge uh, over Dnieper River is destroyed, it will be impossible. Our guys would have been just all eliminated. I uh, I heard a rumor that he used to play uh, Command and Conquer Generals also. <laughs> Um, that he's a fan. No, seriously, I heard a rumor that he's a fan of uh, of uh, strategy games, like when he was a kid in the nineties. He was uh, he was one of the tank commanders, I believe, uh, who went on the on the White House in uh, Moscow in the nineties, if I'm not mistaken. But, yes, uh, he, right. was, he was he he was forgiven for that, and like uh, he even said that he like realized his mistake going against the government and whatever. Um, mm-hmm. But when all these, uh, when all these, like to move on to the next subject, when all these um, great Ukrainian offensives happened, or basically the Russians pulled out of Kherson and Kharkiv, there were some people yes. online who were uh, saying that you know it's the end, and Russia is going to fall, and Moscow is going to be occupied, and uh, you know there's uh, these uh, sources. <laughs> Uh, Russian uh, military analysts, as they're referred to by the BBC and other um, other other, other uh, people who like to quote these uh, doomers. Yeah, what doomers, is your opinion exactly. of, the, uh, of these people who who subtract, let's say, from the from the good narrative of people and uh, the work of the Russian forces? 
and you are uh, like zooming on Strelkov. <laughs> yeah, this is this is Strelkov for anybody who doesn't know. Igor yeah. Gherkin, also yeah. known as uh, the main doomer. Let's see if we can. Uh, let's see if we can. Yeah, there we go. This is uh, oh, yeah. a, a meme that came out recently about Mr. Strelkov. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, about the recent alien invasion that didn't <laughs> happen and was a total failure. Uh, tell mm -hmm. us about tell us about your opinion of uh, these uh, Russian uh, commentators. Let's call them let's call them like that. Mm -hmm. So Igor Strelkov, he is like a pilot who was shot down. You know, mm -hmm. um, he lives off his past glories uh, when he was a commander of uh, the Donbass, like Slavyansk. Well, he basically surrendered Slavyansk mm -hmm. uh, when this whole when the Donbass rebellion against the Kiev regime started. Yeah. And he he really has, a, like, as I said, the syndrome of a shut-down pilot. He says that, oh, if I was the commander, I would have won this easily, like, this blah, blah, blah. But uh, he kind of forgets that he is responsible for surrendering of Slavyansk, for the failed defense of uh, uh, Saur Magila or... Yes, there is another Donbass leader like uh, Bezler, his last mm -hmm. name. He made a video almost 10 minutes about Strelkov. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, he and another hero of Russia, Andrei Troshev, calls Strelkov all talk, non action only. <laughs> mm -hmm. And there was even a like uh, Prigozhin uh, invited him to go uh, into Wagner. And to join uh, Wagner, and uh, what was his response? <laughs> well, Strelkov said, "I didn't, I didn't want to go to the Wagner, but I would like to go. But if you don't, if you you don't use that rude tone on me, like fucking, like a fucking girl, come on, you you, you wanna." Prigozhin says, "If you if you think you're so good, then prove it. Prove it on the mm -hmm. battlefield. But you were looking for excuses, man. Like what the fuck? Just yeah. admit that you are. But just admit that you don't have the balls. You you're only good for sitting in Moscow or in Saint, Pe mm -hmm. or Saint Petersburg and giving excuses. And uh, he well, actually, Strelkov went to the SMO zone, but yeah, no nobody has seen him." On the battlefield, and when mm -hmm. he actually went to the SMO zone, he he's gotten even fatter. <laughs> like what the <laughs> hell? Uh, yeah, that's funny. Um, I yeah, uh, what can I say? I don't know. Uh, I don't know much about um, their history or their personal details, but I don't like people who are always complaining and always putting down like out oh, negative yeah. and, uh, opinions. Yeah, and Strelkov is that type of people. He's const he's constantly complaining, constantly has negative, 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 completely ignoring the positive. He seems to not understand that uh, Russia has chosen a strategy of the, the war of attrition. There, I that's to, where I there to, are. I used to follow him on on Telegram, and uh, mm -hmm. when the SMO started, his Telegram group, you could like up and mm -hmm. you could dislike mm -hmm. down you know what i mean recently like within the last three four months i checked his group i think uh, you can only like now <laughs> like mm -hmm. even the dislike like he removed all the other reactions and also mm -hmm. the dislike so that tells you what kind of uh, reactions he was getting um so going from doomers to like uh, paid trolls um, we we touched upon some of the some of the trolls that you've met online mm -hmm. in your YouTube career, but uh, tell us more about like NAFO and uh, and what they are and uh, how uh, they got you kicked off Twitter and now Twitter seems to have uh, you know gone around to uh, censoring people with Ukraine flags and uh, telling them they have to remove their Ukraine flags. That might have been a joke. I don't know. I saw something like that, and uh, this this seems to be real. Um, mm -hmm. This is like obviously mm -hmm. a, a Ukrainian, pro-Ukrainian, pro-NATO, pro-West, uh, pro-Satan pro <laughs> pro uh, channel, which uh, seems to be complaining because uh, Twitter gave them a mm -hmm. warning for calling Russians orcs. How do you feel about the racism uh, 
in social media and everywhere else. Of course, I feel bad about the racism, get uh, about the Russophobia. You mean? Yes, I feel well, about. Yeah. I feel. I feel bad about the Russophobia. I feel bad about any uh, racism, which is like uh, uh, this group is superior and the other group is inferior. Mm -hmm. Well, and the thing about NAFO, like uh, I got uh, kicked off Twitter because of those people. Uh, like, I mean, I got banned permanently. And each time I want to create another Twitter account, it gets banned for s suspicious activity, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> suspicious activity, I, I, huh? Yeah, I like to, I want to create another Twitter account, but it's it gets banned in two, three days after I create it, I, after I create it. But uh, I have to admit, I was banned before Elon Musk bought Twitter. Mm -hmm. Do you do you use a VPN like in Russia? Is it like always when you connect on the internet, you use a VPN or like sometimes when you need it? Well, when I need to access uh, websites like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, yeah. some I use VPN or I use Tor browser. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, I don't need VPN to access YouTube. I don't need VPN to access VK, obviously. I don't need yeah, VPN yeah. to access... No, I'm saying, uh, maybe, I'm saying maybe try open, try register, try register an account with Twitter like with an email that you registered with a VPN and uh, have your VPN on when you register when you register with Twitter and then maybe and like every time that you use Twitter use the VPN because maybe they have your IP or have some uh, some like system ID from you like of your of your uh, PC basically and that's that's how they're uh, blocking you for suspicious activity mm -hmm. you evil Russian I tried to <laughs> use VPN, uh, but they still somehow figured out that it was me. Maybe I should try to use Tor uh, and uh, uh, like uh, complete uh, anonymizers that change my OS name, my PC name, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I don't think Twitter is really worth uh, that much hassle. Mm -hmm. um, another, another, another one of the topics that we wanted to bring up was uh mr medvedev and uh one of the one of the recent uh, let's say uh well not recent it's been like uh, five six months trolls that uh, mr medvedev put out was this map followed by this map um mm -hmm. so what is your opinion of what ukraine is going to look like near the end and how long do you think this whole smo will take uh, my opinion is that uh, Kiev sh should also be Russian, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, I don't know Vinitsa about, but Poland. I don't think Poland should be like that. Should take that much. I think Poland should call, like only like Lvov, Ternopol, mm -hmm. um, Ivan Frankovsk, Lutsk, like. Uh, uh, what so you're was saying Polish uh, to here basically where the D is yeah. should be yeah and these two these two should be these three should be Russia as well yeah 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 and do you think Poland and Russia will have a border or do you think they will leave something in between to be like a buffer country um, that's in between and, and call it you know the Zhitomir Republic or, or or something like that. Well, I don't know. There are people who say that even Western Ukraine should be a part of Russia, which I <laughs> happen personally to disagree. Really? You you don't think Lvov should be a part of Russia? <laughs> well, yeah, because it will cause problems. Like uh, mm -hmm. when, the, when the Great Patriotic War happened, like uh, the NKVD and the Russia, or, I mean Soviet NKVD and the... Uh, Ministry of Interior, they've been uh, looking for those banderites in the forest for 10 years after the war. Mm -hmm. 10 years. Yeah. They th Those banderites have been hiding in the forests. And many of them were actually pardoned under Khrushchev after Stalin died. Educate educate the viewers what uh, Smerch is. Um, I, uh, I when I went to the museum in uh, in uh, near Moscow, I, I saw like the actual meaning, and I d didn't know it until then. I was amazed what smerch actually means. Uh, you mean smerch like yeah. uh, yep. smerch pure? ML... Oh, ah, smerch, smerch. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Smerch Pion. It was a counter Russian counter intelligence group, uh, a Soviet counter intelligence group during mm -hmm. the war, and 
a little bit after the war they've been uh they've been asked they've been looking for spies and detecting them and punishing them like mm -hmm. foreign spies like german spies and other spies yeah yeah and uh, the abbreviation is basically the abbreviation of like you know death to, to spies spies yeah yeah so, 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 well, I, I i knew about the the organization but i didn't know the abbreviation had that meaning that was yes, uh, that was interesting shall we play a little video here for the guests let me see if i can get this video queued mm -hmm. up um while you play with your phone oh there we go uh turn up the volume let's uh, play this video in its fullest uh yeah. let's see let's see tv and there we go and this is a uh, labor of answering i think uh, extremely high so there yes both sides need to get together and find a solution uh so but the point is that somewhere there has to be a line drawn to okay let diplomacy have a chance let's start talking once again look you 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 no but i'll i'll you're really surprised me the question <laughs> my dear friend you surprised me because if you raise this issue yeah you should have uh, done some homework do you know do you know that zelensky everybody is asking when russia is ready to negotiate when russia is ready to negotiate the west continuously is saying that it is not time to negotiate yet because Ukraine must win in the battlefield before any negotiations. And Zelensky himself, uh, nobody calls on Zelensky asking him when he is going to negotiate, but you should have known, preparing for this topic at this meeting, that in September last year, Zelensky signed a decree making it a criminal offense to negotiate with Russia as long as Putin is president. So can you can you address this issue? Can you invite him and uh, ask him what he? Yeah. So can you address this issue, Yuri? What is your yes. reaction? It is true that Zelensky signed that law, that bill banning any negotiations with the Russians mm -hmm. as long as Putin is president. Yeah. Well, I have to tell you. Most likely, Putin will be our president up until 2030. Most you likely. So? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and uh, uh, the Ukrainians are not going to sign any peace, basically. No, they are not going to sign any peace. And they don't want to because they're freaking... The, the masters of Zelensky, they want to fight Russia to the last Ukrainian. And they clearly mm -hmm. stated that I don't know one of their I don't know one of their guys maybe American maybe European who said that our goal is to fight to the last Ukrainian. I don't exactly. Yeah, yeah. God damn it! I don't re exactly remember who who said that. They all of them said it. There's like first it was one, and then there was like another two or three who said it. But the point is the uh, you know to the last Ukrainian at first it sounded like to the last Ukrainian combat capable male. But now, recently, they've started sending even women to the front, which is unbelievable. Yes, yes, it is. Although some, although uh, Ukraine apologists said it's for, it's for the rear, it's for to support roles. The, the women are not going to participate in combat. Mm -hmm. Well, I saw a video on Telegram of a 16 or maybe 17 year old boy firing a mortar, like 16. Mm -hmm. This, oh yeah, I've that, seen that one too. I've seen that video yeah, as well. That's that's a big in your face for those people who say, "Oh, the 16, the uh, the the mm -hmm. adolescents are go not going to be engaged in combat. They're for support roles for the like, hey, yeah, firing the mortar. A 16 year old year old year old boy firing. That? Yeah, very very supportive support role. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you know that you know that um, there's no Nazis in Ukraine. No, obviously. absolutely not. Yeah, obviously. So, just, so, uh, yeah, this is just how how they greet each other. Yeah. <laughs> I was just gonna get to that. Wait, wait, it's a good joke. So, so um, find no my Nazis video, my you. shorts, my shorts video with no Nazis. Yeah, um, there's no Nazis in Ukraine. Okay, number one. So you know that symbol that you see everywhere. It's actually yeah. an old Indian peace symbol. It's not like a Nazi yeah. symbol, you know. Yeah, yeah. So the yeah. so when they do when they do the Zig Heil, they they are actually yeah. doing the Indian peace salute. That's what it's called. Yeah, yeah. and Zig Heil <laughs> actually it, it means hell victory in German. Just to uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's the literal translation of Slava, whatever. 
They're like, I don't yeah. even want to say it. It's just, it's just really bad and really evil. Um, we had some, uh, uh, we had some really good comedy, some really good find, Russian find comedy sh- lined up. No, no, no. Find no, my I can't shirts. Do it. I can't do it live. I can't do it live. Forget about it, man. Mm. I can't do it live. Maybe in the next one. I'll make you come back for for uh, doing that. Or maybe we'll stop recording this one a little bit early and uh, make another short one. Um, but I can't do it live. I'll, you'll have to send it to me for the next one. Um, we've got lined up Putin. You know, in in the last video that we did, you and I, we uh, that you had that uh, was it from, from from Florida that woman who was saying yes. that Putin is crazy and that you have to move yeah, to yeah. Florida. <laughs> and you told me that you don't like crocodiles, which I can't blame you for. Um, so, so uh, yeah, uh, we've got a video of Putin. Um, I think this is part of uh, his speech, and it answers uh, and it answers that uh, lady. Let's call her like that. Um, from your from your point, that were развязали США после 2001 года, погибло почти 900 тысяч. Where she says America doesn't, well, here are some statistics. Because the триллионы долларов, возможность и дальше обкрадывать всех, прикрываясь словами о демократии и свободах, насаждать неолиберальные, тоталитарные по своему сути ценности. So what do you think of this Russian propaganda directly from uh, from Putin himself? That uh, the US brilliant. is responsible. Brilliant. So you're just like a victim of Russian propaganda, is what you're telling me. That's, that's yeah, what I understand. Yes, I, I totally <laughs> am. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, really. Uh, seriously speaking, though, tell me what you think about the you know double narrative of uh, you know Russia is evil now that it like went in to protect the people of Donbas, but um, America is not evil for going into you know Iraq, Libya, etc., Syria, etc., etc., etc. Well, double standards as usual. <laughs> Nothing new, huh? So you Nothing. just uh, you you covered everything with that one sentence. Um, excellent, yeah. uh, very very uh, succinct answer from uh, Soviet Russian bear. Let's have a look at this oh. video. We've played it before with one of our other guests, but let's play it uh, for you. And uh, you've actually I showed it to you before we started recording. <laughs> but this is uh, Colonel Marcus uh, Reisner. I think is his name. Let's see what he has to say. Die Ukraine, ja, das ist wunderbar. Aber wie schaut das aus mit dem Personal? Wer besetzt ja. alles diese Panzer? Ja. Äh, kann die Ukraine dort das Personal stellen oder wird es doch so sein, dass NATO-Soldaten dann das praktisch bedienen müssen? Man spricht davon, dass Polen schon 20.000 Soldaten in der Ukraine stationiert hat. Sie brauchen keine NATO-Soldaten in die Ukraine schicken. Ich ziehe meine Uniform aus, unterschreibe einen Vertrag und gehe in die Ukraine. Ich bin kein Angehöriger der österreichischen Streitkräfte mehr, sondern Vertragsbediensteter. Das ist die Lösung, die wir also, sehen. Was, ich da ausschließen, dass doch welche was man daraus schließen kann, ist, dass eine hohe Anzahl an ausländischen Söldnern sich in der Ukraine befinden, aber nicht von NATO-Soldaten. So, they're not NATO soldiers when they take off their uniforms. They're mercs, mercenaries. Yeah. So, do you think uh, there's a lot of mercenaries in uh, Ukraine now? What is your guess, or your like? What have you? What numbers have you heard? Uh, there are at least twenty thousand Polish mercenaries. <laughs> I've heard even thirty. But uh, do you think these new tanks are going to be manned by Ukrainians, or do you think it's all going to be like foreign troops? Well, surely there are going to be foreign troops, like. Poles, the Baltics, mm-hmm. or maybe Czechs, maybe some Brits and Norwegians, who knows? Uh, but yeah. surely there will be no Ukrainian crews because you cannot teach them to operate a, a completely different tanks without mm-hmm. uh, any training. Like it, it requires yeah. at least at least months, months of training to 
to retrain them from using the Soviet uh, design tanks into a NATO design tank like Leopard or Abrams. It's mm -hmm. going to take months. Like, it's imagine like you... Mm, You've drove uh, Lada for the most of, for the most, the most, the majority time of your life, mm -hmm. and and then suddenly they have they have a Mercedes in front yeah. of you. Yeah, or in, so it's you've like been all driving the Lada for software. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you've been driving Lada, so mm -hmm. you, you of course you have to, you're gonna have problems driving a Mercedes with all this, you know. Yeah software and all the like buttons and upgrades and other yeah, options yeah. and like you know mm -hmm. uh i know personally even uh, when i've gotten into some cars like you know like uh, with the new fob sometimes you have to put it somewhere in the car and if you don't know where to yeah, put yeah. it the car the car won't start basically mm -hmm. um so yeah same idea i i agree and uh, it's funny and it's sad that these uh, nato soldiers are going to be uh, going in thinking that they're like so cool and that they're uh, fighting for freedom and democracy in Ukraine. Uh, pretty, pretty sad. Yeah. Tell me about the music selection that you've uh, brought for us today. Uh, excuse you me? Sent me? You sent me two music uh, s uh, songs to play. Um, let's play the first one, let's see what it is. Maybe three. What is this song? <laughs> what is this uh, song? Can you tell us more about the song? Uh, this song is, I believe it's from a um, Mariupol uh, based uh, rapper who says, mm -hmm. who sings about like uh, <laughs> how they're gonna defeat the Ukrainian army, the Kiev, and uh, they're gonna mm, send a lot of their soldiers to graves. So it's a pro Russian Mariupol uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, come follow us on uh, Telegram. We might release the music there. <laughs> um, Telegram, for everyone who's not aware, is much more interesting than any of the other social media networks and much yeah. more capable of, of an app. Oh, what happened here? I uh, pressed the wrong button. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the second song. This song is a PMC Wagner. And it's called the Pink okay. Cutter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Я достану and this is uh, actually from the Wagner group or is this like some yes uh, it's from the Wagner it's from the Wagner some group it's not, it's and, not uh, some artist who like decided to play play tribute to them or no, it's a Wagner group. Uh, like, and the chorus that the girl says it says, "Uno, dos, tres, I'll pull out my pig cutter. Where have you come, boy? Why did you come here?" And then cuatro, cinco, cinco says, "I rub my pig cutter, and I will. Uh, and uh, you better go to the west and suck dicks there." <laughs> <laughs> uh, what can I say? No comments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. uh, subscribe, like, share for more comedy. Um, mm -hmm. This has uh, been a very interesting uh, half hour and a bit that we've been talking. Yeah. Yuri, Soviet Russian bear. Uh, yeah. Anything to say to the people who are still watching? Subscribers? Yeah, as, as usual. Keep calm and love Russia, and Russia will win. The Russian victory is inevitable. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna have to get a... 
I'm gonna have to get a picture or a meme or like a logo thing. I have, you know, that keep calm yeah. and uh, blah blah when the when the British with yeah, the crown. Yeah, yeah. I have one keep yeah. calm and uh, wait for Russians. So basically, yeah. your message is keep calm and wait for Russians. Yeah, love Russia. Yeah, and the PFC Wagner are awesome. Those guys are heroes. <laughs> Oh, tell us uh, now that you bring them up. Tell us about the sign. What is it? What does the sign mean? Uh, what did you 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 told me, but I can't remember. This sign means jumbo. It's basically how PMC Wagner greet each other. It's a greeting sign. <laughs> All right, gang signs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Thank you, thank you for stopping by, Yuri. Everybody, you can find him in the links in the description. Yeah. Uh, we will uh, meet up again and uh, do yeah. some more recording. Everybody, yeah. see you later. See you later. Bye.